So if you have this perspective of Asian Americans being apolitical or being the model minority or not having a place in the struggle, then when you go into Asian American Studies classes and you're learning about these histories, you see it as history only. You don't see it as something that is actively working now in the communities that's impacting people now and the organizing they're doing. On campus today, students from all five Claremont colleges staged a rally to highlight a lack of support, they say, the administration has shown to students of color. When a lot of police brutality and like the violence against black teenagers and just like black men was happening, I think that really shaped my politicization. So like when I came back on campus, I felt like I really needed to do something. I had had conversations with like many of my friends that were like students of color like in dorm rooms and like we had talked about like our experiences which were all like very similar. A friend and I decided the experiences that we have aren't isolated to us. We know other students of color like here are like feeling the same way so we started socials in the spring and from those socials we started building like this community of like students of color. We created like a petition that we sent to ASCMC and our president, President Chodosh, and assigned by over 100 students and alumni at CMC basically saying like, yes, we want diverse course offerings. We want institutional funding for these affinity groups. We want sensitivity trainings on race, LGBTQ identity. Islamophobia was like on there. We want a resource center. And then we met with the administration. Um, we started those meetings in April. Those meetings went very well. And they were basically like, you have a lot of things on this petition. Let's try to like focus on one thing. And we we're like, okay, like the resource center, like that's gonna be like very sustainable and we felt like would have the most impact. And so when we left in May of 2015, we were given like, we were assured with 95% confidence that the resource center is gonna happen in the fall. We came back in August, like a little bit before school started, had a meeting with our president, the chief civil rights officer and like the director of academic planning. And they basically told us like, it's, it's not gonna happen. Students who wanted a space for like playing music were able to get a space. This was a clear example of our administration like not caring about students of color. When I was an undergraduate here, there was the Black Student Union and there was the Chicano Student Program. There was the Women's Union, but there was nothing for Asian American students. Racial slurs were found in the library and it was aimed towards the black students. They asked a representative from each of the different student groups to participate in a rally. They had asked me to speak on behalf of the Asian student population. What was really interesting was um, all the student speakers that went on the stage, when they mentioned minority student groups on campus, they mentioned every single group except for the Asian students. So our fellow student leaders didn't really recognize us, nor our presence on the Claremont Colleges. But after I had my turn at the podium, every single speaker after me started including Asians in their speeches. So definitely there was a change in the tone of how we were represented. In ethnic studies, specifically black studies professors like Sid Lamal, they were teaching us information about race and a number of the Asian American students realized that we didn't have the same kind of resources that the other underrepresented minority students had. So we started with the help of the faculty lobbying for resources and so we started an Asian American mentor program with the help of um, an ally in the Dean of Students office who was also Asian American. My senior year uh, there was a performance booked at Big Bridges of Gilbert and Sullivan's Mikado. It's basically white people acting like Asians in yellow face and so a number of us decided to participate in a protest and it was by far I think the biggest action I had seen in terms of Asian American students at 
the colleges. So there were a number of students of color protesting in front of big bridges, which the college hadn't seen before. And you could hear a lot of the patrons who, you know, have tickets to big bridges and regularly come to performances there saying, what are all these Claremont College students doing being so noisy? They're usually so well behaved. And so we were very happy to be kind of a noisy demonstration of, of the importance of Asian American studies. It was a very interesting sort of conscious raising, sort of terrible negative experience for many, but still, I think, a uh, push toward, um, again, realizing what being Asian American was and being Asian American here in the Claremont Colleges. So the very first year that I was here, um, there were four female Asian American students at Pomona who drafted this proposal for a five college arc. Initially, we just wanted one room with a phone and a file cabinet. Like, that's all we asked for. And um, actually, the administration uh, felt that Asian Americans didn't need those kind of resources in the same way that Black and Latino students did, which we found very odd. Two years of chasing after the deans, and I do remember one dean telling me during our meeting when the idea of an Asian American Resource Center was proposed, that that would never happen on the Claremont campuses. For us, we just wanted to have a voice on campus. We definitely wanted to make sure that there was a space, a physical space uh, promised to the Asian students, something that was going to be sustainable far after we all graduated and left. I just remember um, the next day there was there was outrage. I mean, there was this real uh, devastation. All of these things, I think, uh, the Mikado protests, the you know this uh, Walker Wall incident, all these things began to help coalesce the need for um, an Asian American Studies department. The 75th year anniversary um, 
was marked for that, that year. And the theme that the college put out was called um, Women of Voice and Vision. And so our critique of that was, well, whose voice and whose vision are we talking about? And we held a teach-in um, at The Motley, which is the coffee house here. And from that, um, those organizations did build themselves out, did get resources, did build sponsor programs, um, and were able to maintain that. Related to API identity, media outlets pointed out that in other movements at colleges, API students were like unsure what their place was. But at CMC, API students were like centered like in organizing. This was a space where like API students showed up. We started having more meetings with CMC leaders of color. We got input from the five affinity groups, APAM, GenU, Saga, and BSA. And then the next day we held a demonstration. We want to take a moment of silence to acknowledge the violence, both physical and mental, that has happened to students of color and marginalized students at this campus. Many of our friends have transferred from these colleges. Many of our friends deal with mental anguish without any support, no one to turn to, no place to go. So at this moment, we are going to take a moment of silence. Asian American studies means I'm studying something that came out of student protest. So I was really into FGSS courses and I took a lot of them in the beginning of my time here. And um, it was through that that I really explored my identity as an Asian American woman. And that compounded with the work I was doing in the community and on campus really pushed me to be like, I should major in Asian American studies. I see a big focus in terms of student mobilizing, but also institutional support for certain people of color more so than others due to ideas such as the model minority myth or the idea of like a monolithic Asian American identity or experience. Like the way we talk about the model minority myth is very like individualistic. Like we talk about how it's, in, it's impactful because it sets a narrative of success and assimilation and um, it's bad because not everyone fits it. But if we look at it beyond that and really look at it from a perspective of depoliticizing a whole community, then we can really see how the mild minority myth is a lot more subversive than we think it is. Because that narrative of success and assimilation really instills this idea that we as Asian America, even though we're so heterogeneous, um, that we are all like, you know, happy to be silent, happy to be like not apolitical. There were definitely moments last semester during the organizing where I grew like really frustrated because of the fact that I felt like I had to always prove that like, you know, I cared, that I really was like showing up while all the while knowing that like no one would ever know my issues, no one would ever know like my community struggles and history. Every sort of advance that there has been in whatever, in 30 years, is, is, has really started because there were some students that were pushing. I think what I would want students to know about activism here at the Claremont Colleges is its depth and its breadth. And when I say that, I mean depth in terms of people agitated and destabilized dominant norms in a variety of ways. And then the breadth of thinking about across the campuses but different communities, um, I think that's important to know not only because you, it'll help you gear up towards fights for the future, but it also will make you feel less lonely, right? You have generations of people asking for the same thing. Now one might argue that could be kind of discouraging, but I think there's something really important that you've inherited and you're part of this genealogy of people working together to create society, more, a more equal society. And that's really empowering. And empowering in the sense of you're not alone, your voices matter, and things have changed and there's still a ways to go.
Let's cop the shirts and stop wearing them. Humbled in the presence of the veterans and not the ones who picked up their guns, but who picked up their brethren and sister in. History in the making, I was witnessing, listening. Seen this old Japanese lady with the sticker on her walker said, Free Mumia, and this was before the trust of Farians were saying it. Taking it for granted that we talk about the 60s and never get to talk to anybody who done lived the shit and still exists. Or better yet, she still resists speaking to a man.